Cloud9 were 13 to 2 up on SK's map pick overpass, and still the Brazilians stood vigilant and forced to come back in front of a home crowd that could not have been happier to witness it. On the desk now to discuss our second, and of course, C9's pick, it is Mirage. I've got myself YNK, Chad Burchill, and Jason Moses O'Toole. I'm still not trying it. Right. This is where we have to understand exactly what we have to look forward to. C9, SK, and I think that the first question that we have to ask, and there's no doubt on, on the tip of many people's tongues, and I'll start with you, Jason, is can you realistically expect C9 to have the mental fortitude to forget about a loss like that and come into Mirage? Oh, uh, I mean, you, you, I, I don't personally expect them to. You, you can. I mean, at this point, you, you, I mean, as a professional team, you need to. But still, this is, this is a lot of, this is probably a stage that, that I mean, a lot of players, like uh, Automatic has probably never been on a stage like this, quite like this. Um, and especially uh, even the players who are experienced with this, with a crowd like this, this is completely new. This is even probably the loudest crowd that we've seen at events that we've been to and commentated at. Um, and the big thing as well is it's not just that, like, they got knocked out of that map. It's that they had that massive lead and then they lost in overtime. It's the story we see time and time again where the upset is about to happen and it just doesn't, they just narrowly lose. Um, and then you, you tack onto that as well, a lack of a leadership, which is always going to be a conversation we have with Cloud9. An experienced leader in Stewie, who's also their star player, uh, and, and they don't really have like any kind of leadership coach that can keep them focused, keep them calmed down. Do they have someone with them right now that knows what to tell them, that knows how to refocus them? That's a good question. I mean, they do have someone standing behind them. I don't know how many kind of Apparently, words of encouragement he's apparently he says nothing. Apparently he's just a manager. Yeah, he says nothing at all. I was talking to Graham, yep. the, uh, the admin. He said on the on the mics, he just he's, he's a mute. He doesn't okay. yeah, he doesn't interject or anything. He's there to listen to their comments. Yeah, more than so anything. he's probably just you know having a force behind them. I, I know Stunner was when they had him as a coach or a manager. He was probably more of a hype factor. At the moment, this guy's just okay. just there. This reminds me a lot, Alex, of the grand finals of MLG Columbus, where uh, SK then Luminosity played against Navi, and we had that extremely close first match. It was actually Mirage and Overpass as, uh, as well, just in the uh, other way around. So SK wins the first map after overtime against Navi, and that was SK's pick as well. 1917, I think it was the same score even. So second map, Navi's map choice, Overpass, SK just cruises, wins, I think, 16-2, 16-4, something like that, because yeah. Navi, there was no way they could recover after such a tough loss. We all remember Flamey just sitting in his chair, not even going to, to talk with the team. So it's extremely hard to recover after a devastating loss like that, even though you still have to play your own map. And for me, this will revolve mostly around Stewie, whether he has, you know, crumbled or not, because he is the caller, he is the playmaker of the team. If he still has his mojo, then Cloud9 can get things rolling, but for me, that's uh, highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. It does seem like we've kind of, we, we, we felt the C9 hype and then it had, had it taken away from us before the game we even finished. I don't think it's quite taken away just yet. I think one big thing that Mirage is going to provide that, that Overpass didn't, that is something they can avoid a little bit. Ops are obviously going to come into big play, but, the, but there's not as many opportunities for that Opper to get an opening, to get a pick the way they could on Overpass. No. You know, Cloud9 is going to get that mid control. The smokes there are very good at neutralizing any Opper going into Winter Room. Uh, connectors somewhere they might have to worry about time and again, but mostly it's from Catwalk. And actually, in the other Mirage games, Cloud9 didn't really get picked off too frequently by the Oppers who were getting aggressive on Catwalk and taking an angle. So this is a map where if they can have that mid-control and at least avoid damage from the Ops, uh, they should be able to at least kind of execute how they want onto a bomb site. I, th I think uh, Cloud9's biggest issue right now is after being mentally broken, which it's highly likely they have been. They're starting on the T side, which we know has been weak for them. It's plagued them in history and going into here we saw on uh, overpass it's, it's haunting them once again so if they can pull themselves together they still have to put up decent numbers on the t side you know they have to get at least five maybe six rounds if they want to be competitive and automatic he's shown in the first map that he, he's on his way to becoming a big game player like he's come out of nowhere really like he was playing on tsm he was never seen as a superstar he's joined cloud nine he's become arguably one of the best players on the team and he's just stood up dropped 30 on the first map almost pushed his team to victory if he can do that again on mirage he's a superstar i mean if you're looking for a silver lining for cloud nine it's that skadoodle had an amazing performance against mouse sports on, on this particular map very effective and very impactful uh, on the ct side and so gents it does seem, sound like you guys are not expecting to see a third map is that a safe assumption to make you guys siding with sk in this one yeah, I'm going to start with SK. I don't think it's impossible that Cloud9 takes it, but SK definitely the favorite. Chad, the favorite SK? Yeah, I think so. They have a few obvious tells in their T side, they like to that fast B split with the smoke from spawn. So Cloud9 have to know it's coming, but I think uh, SK are going to be fired up and have the momentum. A fired up Brazilian side and very quickly, Yanko. SK. SK. All right, the desk expects the Brazilians to do it, but they are still crossing their fingers and toes that we get a close one into Mirage. Will there be nothing left in the C9 tank, or will they be able to go ahead and put on a show? Just recently, they did pick up a victory 
on this very map versus SK in an offline environment at Ely. Can they replicate that here against Sao Paulo crowd and a fired up SK? We'll find out with your casters. Map two, Cloud9, like you said, Alex, has picked up a win recently, as recently as E-League against SK, but in front of the Brazilian crowd, after getting absolutely taken down in the last map, yep. you've now got to retaliate and come back here. I know it's your map choice, but that is an extremely hard <coughs> thing to do. I think the conditions for this are much different than that of E-League. Just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and get back into it. That's all you really can do. Yes, it was a crushing loss, 13-2. Very difficult to recover from, not going to deny it, but still, their map... Still two to go, not out of it just yet, and you just need to keep your head in the game. Let's get into it then. There's going to be three players towards the top of middle for Cloud9. They're on the T side here, and they have got utility. Smoke's deployed towards the A side, and flashes go in as well. And that's going to be an A split nice and fast, nothing in Skadoodle, but look at Fall in the fur. They push towards Palace, but will be coming in fast behind. Automatic's already inside a cat connector, though, on Catwalk. They're already inside of the B site. He's going to have a plant coming in cold. He just realizes it now. Taco's going to be called back down the apartments. Now, that does put Shroud and, oh. and Taco in a crossfire. Yes, the action is going on toward A, but the bomb is planted on B. Fallen for an FNX need to rotate. Stewart's going to try and get inside ladder room, catch them off, but he's a little bit late to spot them going through the vents, so therefore he's going to fall back, go toward Catwalk. Good pick up on the player that was inside the apartments, though. Taco going down makes this much harder because they don't have the pinch positions. Cloud9's got the kills. It's Shroud and Automatic to start it off at FNX. Now the last is going to make this work as he gets two kills, immediately pops out to hit Shroud. What the hell is that shot? He's got it as well, you know. No care. I thought that was absolutely done for. A perfect play from Cloud9. They go towards the A side. It's an equal exchange at that point. SK have them locked in. They actually get towards B undetected as well. Bomb comes in, they get all the frags required. FNX, that last shot especially, what in God's name was that? He's just turning up. Huge pistol around there. I hope we get to see it from his point of view eventually because that looked ridiculous. Force by having Cloud9, if you get enough kills here, they actually got four. They're going to be forcing him in the second. It's a bold move to make. Normally you get the AKs in the third. They've got two here in the second round, three tech nines to go with them. It's quite powerful. Can work out. We'll see what they can do here. They've got utility to go with it as well after the bomb was planted. You can see they've filed the MP9 looking to shut it down. He gets two kills, but Stewie gets one in return from Palace. Lovely stuff on the MP9 to counter out that of the AK. The early buy bomb is still planted in Cloud9. Very aggressive early purchase. Want to take this immediately back. All the momentum away from SK, but they've got low HP in doing it. And Fur, he himself is only on two. Picked up two kills to put them in this problem, this precarious situation. Stewart tries to flash back through towards CT. Player's not in behind him though, so that means he can actually back away and try and take this position, take advantage of it. Slow acts from SK so far on this retake. Four players going in, they've got to go quickly though. They only have one kit and that's going to be in the hands of Cole. Good shot by Taco to start it off, but nothing's going to cover off. It's fallen down, bomb sticking very quickly, all things considered, and the AK's holding them off. Nothing getting unfallen, this is on the defuse. Automatic pops out late and he's actually going to take down Taco as well. Very well held in the firebox position. Yeah, SK waiting so long for that one. They were holding back, waiting for the teammates to get there together. The bomb was ticking away. Cloud9 probably couldn't believe their luck. They weren't being challenged at all there. By the time they come in, there's not enough time to check every single angle. And Cloud9 come out on top there with the full diffuse coming in automatic to send the fireboxes for so long. Good shot, so that was great work from Fur to actually kick things off. Was that MP9? But it's all for naught. Cloud9 do answer back after losing the pistol. The force by in the second somehow works out for them after losing those two frags. And not a force by in return, SK just to a little partial buy here, a couple of deagles, CZs, and a flashbang. Still, you can never count these guys out of a round. I wouldn't get too comfortable, Cloud9, not just yet. Taco, can't find the deagle shot, nothing's gonna pull it. The aggressive buy works for Cloud9, it could have been massively detrimental if it didn't. Shroud tries to back away from mid and get back over toward the fight, going into the B site. No one there to really take down, no one there to actually exchange blows with, so they'll get a bomb plant out of this for nothing. Fallen walking up mid, spot Shroud, but he's already taken down. Well, now three, Fur as well. FNX at the bottom of the stairs over toward A site. Yeah, not really much he can do about this, I'm afraid. The bomb's down in B, he's got the USP and Cloud9. After losing the pistol from an epic play from FNX, I have to say. It's gonna be 2-1. We'll have a look at the cash here as well. Not really enough to justify a buy here from the Brazilian side. They could bring out an open fur and some deagles and famouses. I just don't think it's worth it at this point. They've got the map advantage. They don't want to throw away their economy so early on in the game. So Cloud9 default for now. Spoke towards middle. Actually, going to be 
presenting quite a lot of manpower towards the A side of the map. They could just do the smoke at the start. They know it's pretty much going to be either a very weak by for SK or another Eco coming in. So this going to be going in with the set smokes, flashes as well, stay as a unit, try and frag together. They've got the SMGs and Tech 9 as well. Send them in first. If Stewie can get out successfully with the first frag, they can give it to the site, but good timing from Fallen actually takes him down to open things up. Shroud walking up connector. He's going to try and get in behind Fur. Exchange is going in. It's an awkward one at that, and Shroud finally does take him down. Serves to buy time for Automatic inside the site to take FNX smoke off in front of him at Sandwich, and he knows there was a second player there. I'm sure he saw Fallen. I'm 100% sure of it, but they're looking away, so maybe not. MP, or rather, excuse me, Mac 10 for Fallen. This could be quite good if they overlook this. Smoke to go off on Palace. They think he's gone down the hallway. He could be in a prime position. Waits, waits. Flash comes in, waits a little longer, tries to deny the plant. He's going to do exactly that for the MAC-10. It takes so many bullets, it means he's traded back immediately after. It does mean the bomb's on the ground, but it won't <laughs> matter. Automatic's going to take cold. It was clever. Oh, yeah. It's not the ideal situation in terms of the weaponry available for him, but he does manage to deny the bomb. They get a couple of kills and what essentially was a full eco. But 3-1 for Cloud9. But not a word to do here, I'm afraid. We go into the first real gun round here. SMG's thrown away, AK's across the board for Cloud9, but the Orc comes in for Fallen. The danger man, especially on the CT side, so dynamic, aggressive. We'll see what he can bring to the table here. Smokes himself in towards the connector. And has vision as well, spots one player crossing over to the mid boxes. Will he reface, that's the question. Yes, he will. Okay, he gets away with that. Yeah, it doesn't quite hit it. Stewie. Flashback into the smoke. He's trying to just get down the catwalk position, but it's going to be cold on the other end of it to catch him off. Now SK's got something to work with inside the site. Cold snapping back up. It's Taco to hit the second, but he's still here, and Taco rotates back around. Cold closes it up all the way from Catwalk. Oh, and great work from SK Gaming, not dropping a single frag there either. First real gun round, they send out a message to Cloud9. The B site is closed to maintenance, I'm afraid. Cloud9 still have money to buy into round number six, but how much? That's the question. It's still pretty decent. It's going to be scooted on the AWP. They have got four AKs to go with it as well. Nothing. He's got to pick, presumably pick up a weapon. So what is it? Galil. So not as strong as I'd have thought, but they managed to get the utility buyout out as well. Smokes and Molotovs available. Swing towards short. Have we got to control the mid boxes once again? There's a bit of aggression fail from the CTs. I think that's going to be FNX and Fur working for the window area. FNX now towards the underpass. And a bit of a peculiar situation gets taken down by Shroud. A misplay, perhaps. Fur looking for the shot at top middle as the smoke starts to fade off. Tagged up. Actually hitting the head through the wall, puts him on 53. Shroud, meanwhile, we're going to try and walk back out from the underpass. So perhaps hitting Fur in the head serves to help Shroud because there's no one above him in the window to catch him off when he does walk out. But at the same time, it rotates Fur into a position where he can watch the connector from inside of the site. Cold's going to wait inside of the smoke down back at the window. He's rotated and instead. That's the call, the change of play, knowing that he's more vulnerable in that position. He's got 100 HP. Fur doesn't, so put him there. But as he backs away, automatic approaches, and he's gotten inside of window room already. Fur waiting for Shroud. That's going to be the exchange. One goes one way, one goes the other. Shroud wins his duel, but automatic loses his to Cold, and Shroud's gone low HP. Has to back away. Cold's waiting for him to wrap back around, and Taco in all this is flanking C spawn. He's going to be almost perfectly timed to get there unless they go quick. Shroud's going to flash off Cold, catches him in the vents, big kill to get. They follow it up, falling goes down, and now they should be able to figure this out. And I think Skadoodle, yeah, already positioned for it. Yeah, they're just eradicating every risk potential at this point. Taco comes in, it's one versus four. Not going to be able to do anything with it though. Skadoodle does take him down. There it is. That's a harsh reset for the CTs now. That, okay, it's not as they actually managed to keep five players alive, so they can still buy, but still, the money situation is not going to be ideal. They get a Famous. Two M4s, a UMP, no AWP available. So still, yes, they have money to buy. Not going to be fantastic for them, no AWP. They're so relying on players like Fallen to pick that weapon up. Obviously have the double potential as well for Cold Zera to chime in. But here we go then. Cole, can I see giving a bounce back here? Famous UMP. Presumably that means they have to go a little bit more aggressive this time. Fallen, yes, he pushes in towards the lower ramp on the A site. And Cold Zera, he's fighting towards short. Doodle at the top of the horseshoe, waiting for Automatic to get more information and Shroud to potentially start pushing in toward Connector. Furs inside of it though. Just beyond it. Left side of the wall, behind the box. Waiting for the angle on the M4. It's Fallen's pushed up inside of A main as well, but right now it's going to be Shroud that starts this off. 
hedge your bets on whether or not he finds for in that corner. With the smoke out in front of him, he's not going to be shown. It doesn't even oh. need to find him. Automatic hits the shot instead from Cat. So Fallen pushed up on Amos. He's going to have Stewie walk in. This should be a kill. Stewie checks it. Does hold true, finds it, but that's going to discourage Cloud9 from approaching the A site. They'll go back over toward B. They've got Automatic in the apartments, boosting Skadoodle up on top of the Cinders. Now, he has the bomb. So if he gets caught in a forward motion and goes down, that puts the bomb around the corner, but thankfully they've already gone in. Automatic's there. Skadoodle, lovely shot, takes Taco. Bomb side open now. It's going to be actually laying down the red carpet for the Terrace. We're going to be planning straight away, but the bomb is coming in. The CT's now no kits, only two flashbangs. What's the call here? They have three rifles in their hands, the money's in the bin. Do they go for this? They're trying to wait to see if there's any sort of rotation. Maybe Cloud9 have a misplay go for the fake, not meant to be. Fallen's and T-spawn. I think at this point they have to save Matt. They can't really justify this one about the kits, and it looks like it'll be exactly that. Cold Zera and FNX falling back. So great work there. Cloud9 after the, getting them the first pick. Comes down to the four and four with Fallen's pick up with the UMP. But at that point, Taco just can't do anything. Doesn't have enough to hold them off towards that B site that gets taken down. And four players surviving for Cloud9 here. So definitely giving us a very competitive game. It's not going to be a one-sided affair. That's what we saw on Overpass. But this is SK's pick, remember. So, oh no, sorry, this is Cloud9's pick. So this is yep. pretty par for the course so far then, taking these initial rounds. But SK's still very good on this map. This is what actually was the map that allowed them to explode onto the scene originally. So we go to five rounds for Cloud9. It's going to be UMPs drawn up for SK. They want to go on this as hard as they possibly can. It's going to be from losses to FNX. And that one AK-47. The lonely AK. And that's why they buy up, because they have that. They yep. can justify it. Well, they saved three weapons, right? So it's only going to be a smaller investment than those UMPs. We've just seen many people using that weapon to great result and we'll see whether it can actually deliver here in round number eight another big one this will be certainly breaking the economy of the Brazilians if we lose this round huge divine for cloud nine they'll be hunting for frags here towards the B apartments that's nothing just trying to show his presence at that point same story for automatic spraying through the smoke just seeing if any city's getting aggressive towards that position but not committing as of yet no one towards the east side of the map at all for cloud nine all five actually focusing towards either B apartments or middle. That does suggest it will be a B split coming in from short. They've still got smoke down for the connector and two more smokes regarding that situation as well. So that's looking very likely right now. Once again, it's Taco by himself in the B side. Smoke out in front. Shroud goes forward of it, catches a nade. Actually, I say that. It goes beyond it. Somehow there's absolutely no damage to him. So I would have thought that radius was close enough. Must have clipped on something. Speaking of something, it's Stewart. And we'll find Cold Zero in top of the ladder to start it off again for Cloud9. And that's the M4 gone for Cold. That's one of the three rifles, one of the two primary rifles. An automatic in on Taco. Had no idea he was that close to the pillar. Gets taken down immediately. You've got to save again, I think, the CTs. No kits once more. And Shroud, he's in a great position. He hasn't moved. He's actually just stuck in the connector, waiting for these rotations to come in. The CTs have no chance here. They're going to have to save these, weapon, these weapons. Once more. It's only a Famous, a UMP, and an AK once again. They're going to be a third stage loss bonus. So, $2,400 on top of those weapons. I could drop a couple of Famuses, try again. But this is a problem. That just means they're saving these weapons over and over again, and they're just buying into each round. They're not really getting what they need to actually win them at all. Not finding a single frag in round number eight. 6 2 now overall. Cloud9 with another great start here as we get to the mid stage of the first half. So then, will any exit frags come in for SK? I don't think so. It's not really a reason to. You can see Cloud9 is kind of sticking together towards. The B apartments not overcommitting, sticking in a safe position. He's got the open hand, no one giving anything away. We have got one player in T spawn, that's Shroud. I think a little bit there, but no frags found. So, like I said, this is actually a bit of a problem for SK. Yep. I would say take a pause here. Because, like I said, the options at a pause, you have to, to buy it. You might as well when you have three weapons left over, but it's a couple of Famuses, that's about it. So then you've got nothing left over, and it continues and continues where you don't have enough money to actually really get rolling. So, the timeout is the call from Fallen. See what he can come up with. That AK still in the hands. Cold Zero's got five kills, but he's only got 2,500. And he's left to just a pistol. Drop over, who could possibly bring something else to the table here? FNX. Could throw away the FAMAS, potentially bring up another one. We're back into it. 30 second timeouts are quick. Indeed, they are. <laughs> well, then, round number nine. The call is a more conservative one, it seems, to the Brazilians. They don't fully invest into this one. So, what has Taco done? He's brought up. He's bought up about a thousand dollars. Got a five-seven head armor, so it means one of his teammates go down. At least he has the armor to go with a fallen weapon potentially. Cold Zera 
He hasn't bought anything. He's only got the Deagle, no armor. That suggests he might be thinking about a double offset of going forward. Could be a good adjustment, all things considered. Cloud9 certainly getting a convincing lead so far. And it's a round number nine. They know the money situation is going to be poor for SK, not giving anything away at this point. It's sticking up. And in the same sort of mentality we saw before, the bomb in the B holes holding up with three players outside the A ramp. Just going to be holding for any CTs pushing again. They're going to be waiting here for a while, it seems. Falling, very similar positions of the UMP on that A ramp. Hoping someone walks into his crosshair. I don't think Stewie will fall for the same trick twice. Let's see if it works out. Of course, Fallen can be flashed in over the wall there. Could go for it, but I don't think... Oh, okay, pulls one out. Is he going for it? Yes, he is. Flash in. Oh, Stewie manages to turn away, dodge it, turn back, hit the shot. Fallen goes down. That's massive for Cloud9. And they get started inside of the site. Molotov to go out on the inside of the smoke at jungle. Flash in. All the utility used. SK, like you said, the rise to fame when they were kaboom. This was the map they did it on. Bomb's gone over toward B. Now, interestingly enough, they haven't accounted for cold. They think they faked this out perfectly, and at the next pulls back kills. Now it's rolling for SK as he gets one on the Deagle. Dako goes down. Shroud's trying to find exactly where Cold's gone. They're gonna flush him out with a Molotov, but he's picked up an AK and evolved Cold Zero find Shroud. And it is just Skadoodle remaining. FNX coming in from Catwalk should be able to catch him off when he goes in behind the bench. And they've lost track of Cold. He's in behind the pillar. No oh. idea where he is, just as he spots him. FNX is there. Big round for SK. After getting that first frag towards the A ramp, I thought that was it. Cloud9 had done enough to just get to that B side, but they didn't count for FNX being there. He's got the AK towards the end, and he's hitting some stellar shots there with a bit of help from Cold Zero as well. 6 3, SK claw on back. And I said the money just wasn't in a position to actually really get rolling here, but picking up one of those difficult rounds has put them back in a fantastic position. It got the open hand once again, of course, for Fallen. As we end around number 10, 6-3. Money for Cloud9. Regardless, it's going to be Skadoodle picking up that first kill, takes out far. I assume he's going aggressive towards the top of mid. Shroud coming from underpass as well. Molotov trying to slow him down. So smoke will be drawn in front of nothing. It does have a bit of a gap toward it if he gets on top of the bench, which I think he did with the couch as it is. To try and see toward the van, but Taco wasn't showing. Fallen and FNX, the only two over toward the A site right now after losing Fur early on. And FNX is actually going to go very passive. He's rotated back outside of the vent. So he'll watch that from CT to make sure no one pushes through it. But he gives up jungle, he gives up mid in doing so, and it puts a lot of pressure on the AWP of Fallen, who's looking A main right now. Meanwhile, Cloud9, they might want to go B, which could be the best thing that could ever happen for SK considering the positioning. Yeah, back to B, they go over the looks of things. They have one smoke, and it'll be Shroud once again. He holds for the rotations that connect to area. His teammates getting ready to deploy themselves. Says there are two waiting for them, Taco and Cold Zera, a deadly duo. Cold corner as well. He's going to have to turn back and cover off for Taco Fallen's gotten Shroud. That's going to be the go. That's the way to go to B, because that's the man down that's going to cover rotations. In they go. Taco holding by Bench. His teammate gone. They read it well, but Taco's able to turn around. He's now going to stay alive. He's oh. pitched against the wall. Lovely headshot. Nothing down. And he spots up another in the corner. Taco, brilliant. As he's inside of the side, it's just Skadoodle. And he's, well, got Taco, so forget the nice crescendo, but a brilliant bit of work from him to cut this down now to a one versus two. And Skadoodle checking every corner. Not being spotted in doing so. is going to drop in. Triangle for the bomb. Nearly catches a shot on Fallen, who's now just waiting for it to present. Then it does. My word, Taco. After letting his teammate die from the B apartments there, he certainly delivers with the shots that came in after that. The AK lighting up Cloud9 at that point. I'm sure we've got a replay of those kills coming in. It was the second one that was impressing me. Look at this. In the air, catches him as he's falling down. Third shot was great as well. Nice work from Taco overall. Cloud9, like he said, as soon as Shroud went down, that was the call to go into the B side, but... They didn't expect that sort of defense to be up against them. Now SK finally have broken the economy of Cloud9. It's going to be a partial buy from them. Tech Nines, Deagles, three sets of armor, a couple of smokes as well. Towards the B side, it seems. Normally going to throw those smokes towards the short. Arches try and deny vision from the CTs, but Sako, he's continuing the good form in the previous round. He gets a kill on Stewart. Make oh, it two. Back into the smoke. Automatic gone down. It's Cold that's playing the secondary approach on this position from Catwalk. Taco shuffled his position. This will catch them off because they've been used to seeing toward the bench in the truck. Instead, he's way over toward the window now. Fallen peeking out. Nothing's bypassed this. But Taco gone. He's at the, front, the Tech 9, rather, excuse me, in toward Checker, but it's all for naught at this point, surely, with four players facing him down. Fallen with a fast shot. SK climbs right back into this game. Well, well, well. And now we get the pause coming from Cloud9 as a response. Well, they have money available now. A nice full buy shroud with about $7,600. He can drop orbs over. To be fair, Skadoodle could use it. He's only got 5,000 himself. 
So SK suddenly comes to life now. Three rounds in a row after that difficult bar with the UMPs and Famuses. They're doing some great work here. He's into round number 12. If you are just joining us, where the hell have you been? You, you missed a hell of a barn burner on overpass. 13-2 in favour of Cloud9. Which they actually ended up losing in overtime. We're now here on Cloud9's pick of Mirage. Started off very well for them. They're actually 6-2 up at one point, but SK fighting back as ever. They're going to be finding three rounds in a row. And another gun round coming in. Orbs out for Skadoodle. Four acres as well. They've got everything they need for a full execution. But what's the play? Timeout obviously means SK get a chance to discuss as well. Normally, if you want to be on the CT side of surprise, a tease, you might be adapting to what you're doing. You throw a spanner in the works, you maybe go for an aggressive mid play, send the orb towards Palace. Something a bit different just to find the first pick and just shut down whatever they had in mind. Skadoodle and automatic top of mid bomb down in that position toward the horseshoe with Stewie. Meanwhile, he's going to be pushing in toward Palace Shroud underpass. Very standard default to try and go for a late A split if they can get the mid control. Cold Zero's on Cat as well. He's going to be able to cover off with for now play a pinch position. Less and less teams. Remember, you go back two years ago, it was Window was always the default playing there because of the smoke. So this is usually how it's responsed. As Fur Fur misses some shots, goes early on it, tries to get the jump, and as he commits, gets peaked by two. Bit of a miss, miss as it is going to be automatic taking the damage, but Taco pulls it back, jumps down on nothing. What a response. It's such a reactive map. If you lose that first frag, someone needs to step out there. This time, it's Taco pushing the B apartments and finds nothing in return. He's actually got control of the B side of the map as well now. He will be falling back, but he's got the man control. And, uh, okay, Stewie, what the hell was that? Double sprayed oh. up from Palace. Lovely as he walks out. FNX does get the trade back. He's going to go toward A main. He's got position to hold that off, but at the meantime, it's going toward B. It's Taco who's got to go back in. The man who pulled this back early has three against him inside the side. Automatic's already too far around. And Cloud9 now have control. Just speaking of Taco, he's at eight kills total, but in the last three rounds, I think he's got about seven of them. So he's doing very well to step up when they go to the B side. Yeah, absolutely. Well, FNX now. He's going to need to step up a little bit more than that if he's going to win this round. Three versus one. Having a look for now, but Skadoodle, he's got his number, takes him down there, and it's going to be Cloud9 finding their seventh round. So back towards the B side they went, and Cloud9 managing after the pause as well to pick one up after losing three in a row. The money, oh, it's not in a fantastic position for SK overall, but still they get the AWP out. It's going to be UMP once again. Taco, what can you buy? I'm sure you have a drop down ready for him. It's another UMP, so it's not great. Money's actually a bit of a problem for both sides. This is a very big round, could force a double eco either way. Let's get into it, round number 13, the dying sectors of the first half here. Fallen, a lot of pressure on his shoulders to deliver here, considering the weaponry available for the team. He'll be in connector looking for the first pick once again, but Skudoodle surely be more passive this time. Actually, not that much presence, but actually nothing. He's actually got a connector, oh. but what a shot from Fallen. Blows his head off and connector there. Lovely stuff. Now he can actually put himself in a position to help for an FNX when they do go for the main take. Automatic's gonna be late inside the window, but look at Cloud9, Shroud, Skadoodle, Stewie again, and all of a sudden it's down to Taco. He pulls one back with the UMP. He's gonna try and upgrade that onto an AK as the bomb will go down. And Cloud9, incredible on the entry considering Fallen had a great position. Absolutely, that's right. And this will mean an eco now for SK Gaming. Going forward to round number 14, it will be Taco just trying to save, presumably actually edging in for this one. Fancies it, it seems. No kit, just one flashbang trying to... Oh, okay, he finds the orb, that's great. Press E, there it is, can fall back. That's actually pretty interesting, picks it up, Matt. Yes, they cannot buy into the next round, but a player like Fallen, he positioned himself correctly. Like, like I said, aggressive towards Palace, for example, finds an AK for a teammate, funnels him to the other side, maybe they've got a B-stack going on. That's when it gets interesting. So saving this orb is uh, mm. certainly necessary at this point. He's going to get away with it. He goes back out toward mid, and thankfully for his sake, Stewie's gone over toward... I believe it's Stewie. Shroud over toward B, so gets away with it. Eight rounds now for Cloud9. SK brought this back from, That's I think it was 6-1. Yeah, that was lovely. And now they fall a little bit shy again, and Money, although, yes, like you say, very important to get that AWP on a fall, it isn't there, so it's going to be falling on an AWP. Taco with the armor saved, the rest of them on pistols. Well, here we go then, round number 14. No one forcing into this round has fallen. We set pressure with him again. See if he can deliver this time. He's opting to go towards the B apartments. There has been presence there from the terrorist. Oh, what a battle that was. One on one with the orb. Skadoodle hits the shot, but Fallen, he goes one better and takes him down. Does indeed. Big kill to find. He goes to 16 HP for it. Cold behind the pillar. P250. Needs headshots. Needs headshots and can't find them. Just barely missing out on one against Automatic. Fallen's got himself rotated around, being dynamic. Another shot through the smoke. Bomb gets off the plant. He almost finds that to deny it. 
as Fallen goes full hero with the only weapon they have. And a boost going up to see above the smoke. Flash comes through. Shroud, I think, is planting bomb right now, so that should be down. Yes, it is. And that puts pressure on now for SK because they don't have kits. Fallen had have found that kill on the bomb. What a different story this might have been right now. They've got two orbs at the moment. Did they save these weapons? Considering now Shroud's found that kill, three on two. I think they should, but Taco, he's proving me wrong. He finds another one, but now I think Fallen, he has to get out of the situation, surely. Problem is he can't. If he goes back towards CT, Stewie's gonna walk out from the vent. Fallen's inside the site, he fancies this. Again though, no kit, no time, and he's gonna go down. So Stewie wins it out. Taco did a good job of finding that first kill, but got caught off at jungle. Yeah, we could see what the idea was there at that point. It was falling towards the V apartments. Finds that first shot it's on your screen right now. Problem is, he goes down to low HP. As soon as he gets it, though, he's trying to be, he's trying to be dynamic. He actually's trying to get back towards it as fast as he can towards City Spawn. Finds another kill. Going for the wall bangs there as well. Could have been interesting had he put one of those off. Not meant to be. The last round here. Cloud9 have another great first half. 9 to 5, looking to get double figures here. Up against the Famuses and M4s of the CTs. Looking maybe to push into the A ramp and be for an FNX there. Flashes go over. Will they be able to find anything for this? Stewie. It's going to get dropped down by Fur. Aggressive play to get information early. Cut off Cloud9. Skadoodle's got Bomb as well. It's automatic and nothing that are working with him inside mid. Fallen. He's the one inside of the connector. And nothing's going to walk directly into him, or is he? Turns back and finds him. Cold's got the shot from Cat, though. Flash goes over. This should catch him in duration, and he's going to get taken down. No, he's not! Taco saves him, they both got blinded up, it gets awkward and Skadoodle falls on a mistimed flash as he goes around a little bit too soon. And that puts Bomb in a very rough position as well, now SK's got something to control in this. Taco shows, Cold tries to bait off of it, goes down, remember he was on low HP, but look at FNX, he's already inside of the apartments trying to get on their heels. And Taco inside of the site can hold them for Fur to get the lineup. Bomb into the default position but not gonna be planted. Nothing has to fight, goes by. Fur calls it, Taco knows it. Now with a flash comes oh. in, hits the shot, bomb down again. Shroud does damage, but in comes FNX. Entering stage left, he should be right there, and yes, he is. There it is, 9-6. SK managed to pull the last round back against all odds. Had Famuses and M4s, they push in towards the A ramp, get a lot of information, funnel Cloud9 towards B, and they're winning the duels there. Taco, like you said, not a huge amount of frags, but when they're coming to him in B, he's holding strong, finds another two there, and it's three players surviving for SK. 9-6, still anyone's game. SK, known to be formidable in this map, they'll be swapping over to the T side, where they actually showed us what could be done originally with this one. I'm sure they'll be showing more innovations here in the grand final, but we'll take a quick break before it starts. Don't go anywhere. This one could get very interesting indeed.
So this time again, Cloud9 leads at the halftime and SK trailing. But this time I have to say SK a little more in the game, obviously, than what they were in overpass. And we go into a T-side where they are known for mechanics and technical skill in terms of execution. So good chance they can pull off some rounds. It is Cloud9's map. Cloud yeah. map's pick. I can't say that word. Those Cloud words. Cloud9's map pick. Thank you. There you go. Anyway, it's going to be SK Gaming, like you said, four sets of armor. Fallen, he's the utility player. He's got a smoke and two flashbangs. If they win this round, all of a sudden it's 9-9. Well, should be. And at that point, it's anyone's game. I kind of hope they do win it just so I want us to go the distance again. I'd love to see another overtime. They're always so hype. And it's going to be five players towards b horse it seems. Four SK, one smoke. Where's that heading? It's normally towards the end of the apartment itself, but that's not going to be the case this time. Fallen throws it in. And actually towards the short arch. Flash comes in now. Who can step up for Cloud9 and hold them off? Shroud trying to find the shots as well as they bypass. Can't find the head, nearly does. Goes back around, he's trying to dance in this. Bomb's gonna be planted, but he might be able to catch this off. Does, but it goes down. So they've got ch chance here to hold off the retake. Four members left for Cloud9, two only for SK. And those two are now down to one as Fur gets jumped in on by nothing. Good shot from Cold, follows up, he's got two. Dancing around, he's got three! Cold Zero gonna get dropped in the end by Automatic. But my God, what a chance he gave himself. Good Lord. I thought that was it, I was out of my chair. Three headshots, ever called Zera. You've got to appreciate how good this is. You can only respect it, really. I thought he had every chance of finishing that one off. He just looked so composed. Every headshot, as clean as you like. Let's have another look at that. This first one, he kicked it off. He just needs an inch. Three headshots. It's so scary to play against him, is it not? Luckily, though, it was the last kill coming in for Cloud9. They managed to win the pistol. That's big. Four Spy, though, after getting the bomb down. We saw similar scenes from Cloud9 here. Seems a lot of teams were doing this in these big games. FNX with the only AK. Three Tech Nines and a Deagle as well. Two smokes, three flashbangs, make it four, and a Molotov as well. Big round for Cloud9. If they can win this, as another eco, and they're so close to taking the second map. Great start here once again. Nade goes in, perfectly placed, will catch off Fur, and he will go down to 62. Fallen's gonna work up on Catwalk Bomb in his hands. And it looks like B again for SK. Skadoodle on the scout. Big pistol for them to win. Gives them a chance to drive this all the way home. Still a long way before that home is found. Shroud's gonna chime in. Does go down in the end, actually. FNX, who jumps in on the AK and has a shot against both Automatic and Shroud. They'll throw guns around because of HP, but this gives them time to get the bomb down. They've got a man advantage to work with. Caught off in the corner. Ooh. Nearly not caught off entirely, and it actually gives Taco time to refrag. As nothing has to put so much time and effort into finding the kill in the corner. Let's go doodle with that scout we did mention. Has a chance for a one shot against FNX, given his HP on 13. Stewart's got to try so hard with this UMP to bait them out. Good tag in. Now they're very low. A good find on FNX. Exactly that scout. Stewart, though, walks around, catches off Taco. One to find. It's Cold Zera. And he's been clever behind the van. Tapping UMP. Denies the defuse. There's a kid still on Stewart. And he's going to go back out to the left side. Tries to bait him in, and it works again for Stewie. But does he have it? He's got it. Just Definitely. barely got it. That is extremely close. Lovely, lovely Even work. Even Cold from can't believe how close that is. Yeah, I think he thought he'd done enough at that point as well. Denies the defuse. And like you said, that's a nice little double bait there. We used to see that on like a map like Inferno towards the, the emo area. You have two players in towards that position when the bomb's down as well. You can the CT's kill one there. They assume it's never going to be two. And this time called Zara shows his hand at the right time, but low HP. Stewie just finishes him off there with the USP. So very composed stuff from him. Came right down to the wire. But that's the force by thwarted there by Cloud9. SK now just have to take the Deagles. It's going to round number 18. It's getting very interesting here. Indeed, two in a row. Very close rounds. Cold Zero has been left in both situations and what are next situations and just can't quite deliver in both of them. Deagles across the board, but they're still keeping pressure applied to Cloud9's economy here. Stewie exposed himself to those Deagles, finds one kill, commits to the spray, takes some damage but gets out of there. Cold at the top of middle as well with that Deagle still trying to find a shot. Close rounds twice for SK going into the B site in these eco situations. Quasi buys as we used to call them, whatever you'd like. Two situations where you can't buy after losing the pistol, and now Cloud9 have themselves on 11. And this time as well, SK, they've just got to sit back and be complacent. They've got to allow this one to expire, and when it goes to 6 to 12, that's when they can really get the charge back on with weapons. Taco last alive in this. Well, just Taco remains. The Deagles not really delivering much here, apart from a, a few flesh runes there. 
Taco, he'll be falling last, and the pause comes in for Fallen. So, 12-6, tile nine. Of the lead once again map up. That doesn't necessarily mean good news overall for the North American side. 13-2 on overpass. Was shut down. Tactical pause at this point. So what's the play? We have not got an orb available for Fallen, I do not think. He couldn't buy it at $4,700. So that's why they're taking the pause right now, just trying to work out what's the best approach here. Obviously, Fallen, one of the absolute best snipers in the world. Can't bring that weapon in, but he's not too shabby of the AK either, so don't worry about that. And we'll be round number 19. And still, we have got a UMP and a Famas here for Cloud9. With this lead they have, it's justified trying to build up the bank balance going forward. Skadoodle staying on the scout. That's actually considering that uh, Fallen doesn't have the orb. That's fine, you know, that's actually okay. Not bad at all. AK's out. Smoke's available now for SK. Time to see if that execution-based play, that strategic style, will come to fruition on this map. Fast play for Cole to get all the way out toward middle before that smoke lands. They face early, and a double smoke. So they actually get their goal and accomplished smoking off that mid window and bait out a little bit of utility from the CTs because in that window, Stewart wants to try and cross back over and stay alive, so he puts one out of his own. He'll do so. He's got 24 HP still to work with. One of the three members with a kit right now on the CT side as well. Keep that in mind if it does come to another bomb plant. We've seen a few of them already from SK. All to play for him. They make their way towards the A site. They have got that mid control we talk about so much. Falling with the bomb there as well. FNX waiting at the A round. The CT's trying to challenge as well. Shroud, he's towards Shaw. But connector control obtained by Fur. If Shroud does face at this point, he could catch him out. But deciding to focus towards B. He's actually the only player at that point at the moment. So one minute mark comes in. What's left for SK? They've got a smoke. Four Molotovs and a couple of flashbang. That's it. Looks like they're heading back towards B. The bomb's still in T spawn though, so not. That's they able to commit at this stage with one player in the connect. They, they still have options. That's going to be Ferd is waiting, lying in wait to see what's available for him. It's Taco with a smoke slowly fading before he can jump around that corner. Stewie boosted is actually quite clever considering his HP in this situation. Charles going to bounce from Molotov. They'll be slightly forward of that. It'll do a bit of damage on the cold. Even less than that on the Taco. Taco's actually walked back into it, I think. I thought he was beyond it. Now Stewie in the corner. Does make it work. Fallen's going to fall nothing. Great setup from Cloud9. And the first gun round looking like it's going to go their way as well. Cold's trying to find an angle that's favorable. They've got 17 seconds and nothing's got cold. Bomb goes back over toward A, though. Good adaptive call. FNX tagged up. Has to go back in for the plant. 11 seconds as Fur bails him out, but it leaves him on 2 HP to try and make oh! this work. Fur sprays down two. Never go through the cubby hole. It's a sitting duck, and suddenly it works for Fur. He's traded back. FNX with 2 HP has to make this work. Bomb planted for him in the middle of the boxes. And Skadoodle's already in on the scout. It's lethal at this point, as two is the AK for Stewie. And he's looking like he's getting ready to jump across. Skadoodle already in the corner, gonna tap this out, force the peek back in. And he's actually around the corner of it. He's gonna hold this down, 10 seconds, tries to spray it in. No repeat coming out, Stewart jumps over, he's low, but he can't respond fast enough, FNX. And now one of the kits comes back into play, it's gonna be 13 for Cloud9. Oh, it was close there, wasn't it? Uh... I think it was a 5 on 2 at that stage. You managed to get towards the A side, like you said, they're running through the vent at that point and getting mowed down. It comes down to the two versus one, and FNX certainly had a chance to finish things off there. Great work by Fur. Fantastic stuff from him to even give them a chance. Gonna have to buy up in this round once again. The lead increases 13 6 for Cloud9. Looking like they will actually. But actually, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. Let's not say that. Let's not bring the curse in just yet, you know. Five AKs available for SK. No orb still on this T side. Two smokes, three flashbangs. Maybe just a simple execution here, considering the setup right now. The bombs in Palace. One player on the air round is FNX. They can just smoke towards the steps and jungle, flash spawn, and try and overwhelm the CTs. It's not great, but something is nothing. Finds the first two kills. Lovely work by him. Great start off for Cloud9 again this time. 14 rounds looming. They just need to get three more. And Flash comes in, great positioning, good position to peek out again, and they're gonna catch them off. This is done. It's gonna be an absolute slaughter with only one kill going to SK. 14 Cloud9, as I mentioned. Eight still, or rather, excuse me, six still for SK. Six is not closed. But what a performance from Cloud9 in this map as well. After the start they had on Overpass, the heartbreaking loss, they mentioned it on the desk, Alex brought it up. E-League, very recently, Cloud9 was able to take down SK in an offline conditions on this map. But we mentioned it was a very, very different story in front of these Brazilians. 14-6. Has to be a force by from SK to stay alive here. 
Round difference is too big to actually justify another week and allow Cloud9 to get to number 15. It's a Tech 9, two Galils, two AKs, and some smokes. No mid control obtained for now, but they're going to be flashing in and trying to get it, lock it down. As Scudoodle, he comes back towards the window. This could be the moment he finds another frag. There it is, takes down far, can fall back at this point. We're getting closer still to that mid position. Cold's got bombies on Cat. And Fallen and Taco are inside the apartments. He wants to go. FNX has to hold off a peek for Cold until he gets around the corner. Flash comes through. FNX is down and Cold's trapped in. He's a sitting duck right now. He's vulnerable, as can be, from that connector position, but they're not peeking through for his sake. That's massive because now he can start to round the corner, but it's going to be Shroud in the sight. Taco actually kills Fallen trying to get him and automatic puts Cloud9 on map point. There it is. 15-6. Of course, a pause comes in at this point. It is going to be maximum loss bonus. 15-6. Do you know what? SK haven't found a single round here, Matt, on the second half. It's yeah. nine and zero. Consi well, considering how close it Six was zero, in the first two, we've had diffuses on, what was it, I think three out of the first four rounds. Yeah. It looked like you had to think when the guns came up, that would transfer into wins, but it never has, and, it, and it's broken them completely, I have to say. <sighs> Cloud9's well, done well. Surely this is it for Cloud9. After winning 13-2 in the first half of Overpass, can you imagine they picked up that map and then completely rolled... SK or Mirage that they are now, what a storyline that would have been. It's looking very likely we'll go to the third map here. Four Galils and AK, but still you can never count SK out, although this time I'd say it's pretty likely they're going to be going into that third map. We'll see what happens here. Smokes, flashbangs, a couple of decoys in there for good measure, and this is it. Can SK keep their head above water? Three players outside of A main trying to get into the site. Bomb is over toward yeah. B, what though. What is this? So what is the intention here? So you've got the smokes. The old <laughs> switcheroo. Yeah, just four guys go, force the rotation. I'll just slip in and then clutch. I guess they want to just do all the smokes, send two in, look for the kills, and then everyone run back towards the B halls. But look, there's going to be one player pushing. That's Shroud. He's in a perfect position to shut this down. Exactly, because they've rotated the other two players over, at least partially over, as Automatic is outside of the vents at mid. But Fallen could be faced by Shroud, and he's just made a lot of noise on that stairwell. Shroud may hear him here. So it's not going to be the full commitment to trying that 4-1 fake out play with a clutch coming in from Fallen. Instead, he goes back over and joins them, but now they actually have pulled rotations in the side of the map that they want to take, which is a bit peculiar in that sense. This is it now. We get to the one minute mark. It will be a full execution here. We have three smokes one for CD Spawn, one for Jungle, one for Steps. Flash in. Hope for the best. The Galils have to go up against the fully equipped with three AK CTs, no less, and an Orpus Skadoodle as well. Nothing with a flash in his face. Stays at Sandwich. Gets them to walk in. Gets them to commit. Good duck down from Cold. Bypasses the bullets and gets the trade back in. But Stewart comes out from Firebox. He's got two. Cloud Nine. They might have map two in this series, especially as Skadoodle's gonna take down Cold. It's all left to Taco. And Firebox, living up to his name, is gonna get set ablaze. Catches one of the way through, but Shroud's there, and Cloud9 have forced out map three. They've done it. They bounced back. There was speculation as to whether they would after that sort of devastating, crushing defeat after having the 13 2 lead. They're looking on point now, though you have to say that was a formidable victory. And SK not really arriving in that second half at all. The money was a massive problem. Fallen never really got on the AWP, and their T-sides aren't looking too great at the moment, SK. We do move on the Dust 2 next, Matt. I didn't think it would happen after the first one, but there it is. I don't think it is Dust 2. I might have got that wrong. Well, with that said there, the desk is, is ready. Dust it's Dust it's 2 fine. coming it's up. Fine. That'll be a brawl with these two teams, and we've got to see Skadoodle step up to it, but the desk is there. Cloud9 looking in form, guys, especially after the E-League, or rather, victory over SK. They do it again. Yes, indeed, they do. It's going to be going into a third. Cloud9 have proven to us here, amongst all of the doubt on the desk, that they are capable of bouncing back after that crippling defeat on Overpass. Though I say there was doubt, but there also was an acknowledgement that if Cloud9 had certain different categories filled incorrectly, that was going to go their way, and they managed to pick it up, Chad. Three big categories filled there. Star players standing up, tick. Diverse strategies, tick. Mental fortitude, tick. Boom. Cloud9 <laughs> looking uh, really good. I'm impressed. You don't like the ticks? Tick. You don't like the brutal I savage? I, I just, I've just never really, uh, never experienced it before. It was good though. Well, I'm new to the. I'm sure it'll be better. Like most stuff. things, it'll be, uh, it'll be better the second time around. I think. Yeah. Um, I, I think the big thing is a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the more I watch this the Cloud9 team in this in this tournament, like, the the more I start thinking this criticism that we have against Skadoodle and Shroud recently. Is, is accurate and if we consider them the star players of this team, but it, it's, I mean, we, we've seen Stewie this year slowly start taking that mantle and now automatic, if he's stepping up the way he is right now, 
those are the two star players of this team. Nothing is playing well as that third option who can go off when he's needed to, but just has great impact. And then when you consider Shroud and Skittle in the, as role players, as the people who aren't supposed to be having the massive amounts of frags, this is a very well-rounded team, and these two are playing well. And if they can keep up even just this level of play, Skittle's hitting his shots, Shroud is coming in at timely moments to find a couple kills, the precision aim is busting out. So um, this, is, this team is actually peaking really, really well right now in these finals. I mean, one of the critiques we had for Cloud9 was that they were more kind of YOLO, less structure, more aim, not so much brain. And however, however they're sitting here and outsmarting, outplaying, and out-aiming at some point or another, SK Gaming, a team that we've kind of been singing the praises of in terms of structure yet. Yeah, I mean, that push from Stui from Aaps that we just saw, that was purely timing, great spray trans yeah. transfer for him to, to get the both kills. But I think what enabled Cloud9 to come back uh, on map 2 was that strong start, because against, you have to remember, SK won the pistol round, and it was Cloud9 who won the force buy. And force buying against SK uh, as a T is very risky, because if you lose that force buy round, you obviously give them a lot of room economy-wise. They also have more leeway, obviously, to be aggressive against you. They get their confidence going. That's what happened to VP on train, that 14-1 CT side. It was because VP kept force buying on the T side, knowing how strong SK is a CT. If you let them have double ops, if you let them have all the utility, it's going to be extremely hard for you to win the round, even if you have you know, AKs and, and all the grenades. So that was a, a risk taken by Cloud9, and it paid off big time. It allowed them to take over uh, the control of the economy for the better part of the game. Now, one of Henry G's statements was that he's losing faith in SK's T sides. Uh, didn't see, you know, the most convincing performance here on Mirage. Didn't get a single T round, if I'm not mistaken. That's kind of uh, unacceptable, wouldn't you, wouldn't you fix a tag like that? They've been dropping off on Mirage anyway, right? So I, I, I mean, zero the, and seven. Yeah, I know that's not fantastic. It's a map which you would have once upon a time considered a home map for SK. Um, but they have been dropping off, and if it isn't a map that they've been focusing on, they don't have new stuff to throw at Cloud9. And if Cloud9 have studied their their opponent like they should have, yeah, they knew what was going to be thrown at them. This is the first time SK plays Mirage at this tournament, tournament as well. So obviously not that comfortable on it anymore. I, I think that for, for Cloud9, it was great, obviously, that I think mentally more than anything else that they had a, a strong showing here because that will give them a fresh start basically coming into third map. Yeah, and I'm sure there is just that slight nag at the back of their mind, like, if we had just won overpass... You, you don't think about it now. If you lose the final, that's when you that's start <laughs> thinking about right. it. But okay. right now, you're only focused on map three. Yeah, and that's what we're going to go ahead and do as well. We're going to be focusing on Dust2 after a very short break. It's going to be intriguing to see a rematch. A best of one was played between these two teams on this very map, the decider of the grand finals. It did go 16-6 in favor of SK, but now... Cloud9 have a chance at redemption, not only from Overpass, not only from Mirage, it will be Dust2. We go all the way with the grand final, and what better way to celebrate some fantastic CS from both North and South America. After the break, we'll be talking about that third map. <laughs> 